Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today you join me from home because I'm gonna be doing some wiring um, and I thought I'd bring you along on that part of it. So today's gonna to be the second video um, in kind of a series which is going to describe how to read um, wiring diagrams and create pinouts. And um, before you get to a point where you can actually start making a harness, so obviously it's critical that all the parts are known and understood before you start wiring things in and potentially uh, damage expensive hardware. Anyway, um, before we jump into it, I think I'll just give you a bit of backstory as to what I'm doing and how my installation might be a little bit different, but, but there's, there's quite a few similarities. But anyway, I'll jump into that now. So, um, what I'm doing, um, ignore, that, ignore that for a second. This is the EMU Black um, from ECU Masters that I'm gonna be using on my E36 project. Now, um, I did buy the harness with the um, ECU, but I won't be using it initially because before I jump into using this on that car, I wanted to get familiar with the software, with the hardware, with the calibration process, etc., etc. So um, that's the rationale and the reason why I bought the Golf, which is in the previous video. So that's going to be kind of a test mule to the E36. So rather than cutting into that harness and kind of making it so it will only run on the EMU Masters Black, um, I'm going to create like a plug and play harness um, so I can use the factory ECU log data um, using VCDS um, and then when I'm ready I can literally just plug and play my EMU masters uh, my EMU black into that um, and do whatever I need to but if obviously if I've made mistakes or it's not working or, or whatever it might be I can just quickly jump back to the factory ECU and not be kind of stranded so with that in mind um, what I've done is I've taken a ECU, which is the same as the V5 Golf. I've gutted it and so obviously removed the circuit board, which has just left the pins. So what I'll do is I'll solder the, the pins I need and then they will come out the back of the case. They'll go to the connectors for the EMU Black and obviously that will plug straight into the EMU Black. So there'll be kind of like a, a harness coming out the back of this going to this making it plug and play so whenever i need to put the emu black into the golf i'll simply unclip the harness from the factory oem ecu move that ecu out the way put this kind of box in its place with the wires coming out the back and then the emu black will just be in a glove box and it'll just connect up so it'll be nice and easy obviously before i get to that point i need to understand what all these pins are and what all the pins on the ecu so obviously i can make up make a pin out to go directly from this to this and be confident everything should work as expected. So whilst we're here, let's open up this box, which is ah, it's my kind of first unboxing video. Um, so yeah, this is the ECU Masters EMU Black. So with it, you get a uh, pinout, you get some resistors, some blanks for any spare slots on the connectors, the connectors, the ECU, nice compact piece of kit, some pins, and a warranty card. And that's about it. So yes, yeah, so this is the pinout that I'm using for the EMU Black. I and mean, then on my computer, I've got a, a pinout for the factory ECU, which I think is, this is, it will be an AGN, which is a 20 valve V5. So, let me put the camera down and I'll jump onto my PC and show you where we are. Okay, so this is just an electronic copy of the paper copy which comes with the EMU Black. So as you can see here, we've got a black connector which is pinned 1 to 39 and a grey connector which is pinned 1 to 24. Underneath you'll see a description of what these pins uh, mean. The next um, part of that pamphlet is um, just a description of how to kind of read the pins and then a description of the configuration for the wideband sensor based on whether you have a Bosch LSU 4.2 or a Bosch LSU 4.9. In my case, in the Golf, I'll be wiring to this configuration because that comes as standard with a 4.2. But when I move over to the BMW, um, I'm going to be fitting a, a slightly newer Bosch LSU 4.9, so I have to change the configuration to this. But next one is about uh, the VW wiring diagram. So this is the, kind of the first page, which just says it's yeah, it's for a Golf Borer 2.3 125 kilowatt with corresponding to I don't know 170 brake, 
and it's a 20 valve AQN engine. So now we kind of jump into the kind of wiring diagram. It can look a little bit complicated, but I guess it's worth just keeping in mind that it is literally just a box of tricks connecting to another box of tricks with a bunch of wires in between, which tend to be signal or um, positive or negative. So it, it, it again, it looks, it can look a bit complicated, but it's it's not. It's just a wire with some details on about the color, the gauge, the connect to the pin, and the destination. So yeah, keep it in mind. Just just try and keep it simple. Right, so the pins where the um, uh, module that I'm concerned with is J220, which is the engine ECU. Um, and what I'm concerned with is the pins on that ECU. So here we've got T121 slash 3, which means it's the 121 pin connector, and this is pin 3. So pin 3 um, goes to 104, which is a connection, connection in the dash panel wiring, which is 15. That means this is in the, it's a 12 volt ignition feed into the ECU. The next one is 62, which is D78 up here. And that is a um, 30A connection, which basically means that this is 12 volt um, battery connection into the ECU. So you've got 12 volt battery, 12 volt ignition. And that's it. So you've got to work your way through all the pins. So I'll, I'll give you another example. So this again is J220, and the pins that are highlighted here are 102, 103, 110, and 94. They correspond to four ignition coils, so a case of just a case of marking from and the correct to. So for example, 102 goes to N70, and N70 is ignition coil 1. Um, so once you've gone through all the pins, um, you might be able to to kind of delete some of them straight straight away if you know you don't need them, but it's worth capturing as much detail as you can in the beginning. I tend to use Excel to capture it all because it's easy to manipulate after after you put it all in there. And talking of Excel, okay, so this is my sheet. Um, as you can see, the first column is just one to fifty-four, which shows the number of pins I'll be using. The next um, is uh, I call it destination based on R32. So this is something I found online, which was someone had obviously pinned out an EMU black for an R32. And as the R32 is based off the VR6, and the, and the V5 is based off the VR6, I, th I thought I could use this as a, as a reasonable starting point. Um, so if, if we look at starting at number one, um, it is uh, B1, which is the black connector, pin one, goes to ignition core five. And then on the VW connector, it goes to 103, which is the ignition core five and it's a 0.75 wire. So I've taken that information and started with ignition core five. That goes to pin 95, in my case, not pin 103. So that's a difference, but it's, it's still fine. But it does go to B1, which is the same. I'm using a slightly bigger coil, a slightly bigger wire, gauge wire, which is the one. And again, the last one, which is destination final, I've just kind of checked, double checked, triple checked to make sure I'm happy that that is ignition core five relates to B1 on the EMU black and then pin 95 on my VW uh, B, B5. Um, let's try and find one which is the same. So yeah, this one, number two is the same. So we've got B3, which is black connector three, is the knock sensor one, and that correlates to the, the pin 106 on the VW ECU, on the VW yeah, uh, wiring diagram, which is also knock sensor. And then what I found on, on, my, on my one was, again, knock one was 106, so that checks out. And again, B3 on the EMU black. Um, so yeah, so it's literally just a case of working your way down, checking what you can find. If you can't find anything, then you've just got to use the information you have um, and use the wiring diagram. It's nice to have something else someone has made just as a kind of a sanity check, but I wouldn't base all my decisions on this. It, you've got to do your own work first and just use this as like a, again, a sanity check. Um, it does get a little bit complicated when you get down to things like this. This is the drive by wire um, throttle body. So again, you can find the pins on, of the ECU connector, which is pins 117, 118, 92, 83, 84, 91. Great. And then they go to the drive by wire throttle, which is um, pin 3, 5, 1, 2, 4, and 6. Now, the problem is you don't know what each one of those pins means. So when you go to wire it up, how do you know which one to go to, but which one? Okay, for, for example, this is the motor, the drive-by-wire motor. Now, which one's positive and which one's negative? 
So you can't you can't wire it into the ECU black EMU black because the EMU black will be saying um, one is positive. Uh, I don't know pin B two is positive, pin B three is negative. But if you don't know which one it is, you can't do your from and to. So this is where you've got to just do a bit more kind of digging and research into what exactly these pins do um, on the connector side or on the actual component side to work out what's I don't know what's the um, positive and negative, the pot, is the pot inversed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So once you've done all that, anyway, you'll get to a point where you can create something similar to this, and all this is is a basically a, um, a kind of a, a view of the ECE pins. So take the top one, for example, the ones that are all in green. That is just a view of the back of the connector. So not the mating face of the connector, but the actual the kind of circuit board side of the connector. Um, so as you're looking at that side, because that's the side you're going to be um, soldering onto, this is that correct view. Um, and the green just basically uh, relates to all the pins I'm going to be using. And um, anything that's not green basically means that that pin isn't being used. I then copied that data down and changed the colouring somewhat. So anything black means it's going to the black connector. Anything grey means it's going to the grey connector. And anything um, black and grey means it's going to both. Again, copied this down um, and just created um, uh, an illustration of the wire gauge. So if it's orange, it's 0.75 gauge. If it's blue, it's one gauge. And if it's red, it's 1.2 gauge. So by using this again, it's a quick graphical representation of kind of wire gauge, pin out, and um, kind of destination connector in one hit. So I can look at the back of that connector and say, right, so for, for example, pin 33, I need to put a 0.75 gauge wire onto there. It's going to go to, um, uh, it's for pin 33, which is, I'll have a look in a second, but obviously that's going to the EMU black connector. Um, so if I scroll back around again, 33 is, roll. here we are, 33 is sent to the ground for G185, and that's going to the EMU black B38 connector. So again, by using this and cross-referencing it with a chart, I can quickly see what wire I need to solder and where it's going to. Right, okay, so once, once you get to this point, you should be relatively comfortable that your wiring is complete and been checked and double-checked and triple-checked. So when you start wiring, you're, you're confident that everything is as it should be, because the last thing you want to do is start soldering wires, shrink wrapping, Etc. Etc. And then figure out, oh, one wire's in the wrong place, or you've wired it wrong, etc. Plus, in my, in my case, it's kind of actually especially important that I make sure it's 100% correct, because I need to feed the wires to the bulkhead, and then once I go um, into the cabin, I won't be able to see the pins because the ECU will be in the kind of scuttle panel of the engine bay. So I'll be I'll be 100% reliant on on my kind of labelling up of the wire. If that's wrong, then it's then it's pie over. So yeah. It's worth putting the effort into making sure this is all 100% so that when you actually go to install it, there's no issues, no dramas. Right, so that's the end of the video. So just to recap, um, what I've done in the video is to show you how to create a pinout to go from a factory engine harness to an aftermarket ECU. And the whole plug and play element just allows you to plug your aftermarket ECU in, but also jump back to your OEM ECU without having to um, basically unsolder or kind of de-pin anything. Um, and the process is the same if you're wiring your aftermarket ECU directly in. In that case, you just cut the the um, factory harness connector off and then wire in your, your new aftermarket connector directly in from there. Um, it just depends on preference. In my BMW E36 project, I'll be doing that. I'll be going direct to the engine connector. I won't be creating a plug and play um, harness. But for this part, for the Golf, it's easier if I do that so I can go backwards and forwards just to collect data and just make sure um, I haven't done anything wrong or I can jump back to the ECU if I get stuck or stranded um, but hopefully by the time I get to the E36 I'll be well versed in the in the software and the setup so I won't have any uh, issues or concerns um, yes yeah, so I think that's it the next video is going to be creating the actual um, harness itself so using the information I've gathered in this video and I've made in this video I'll use that to create the harness in the next video so I hope to see you there as always, thanks for watching. If you've liked it, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, hit subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, bye.